The glitz and glam is the fame, but it's the work backstage that makes the game. I'm Christelle and the Vey Bandal, your host. Come with me behind the lens and watch their stories unfold. Welcome back to Behind the Lens. On our previous episode with Mary Salubre, we talked about charity and advocacies in the pageant industry and how it's very important for girls to take their experience, whether they win or they don't, use it as a learning experience to continue building yourself up and to continue being a voice for the voiceless and continue to work on your passions. So we'll be welcoming her back today to Behind the Lens and talk about her future projects and her future aspirations. Please welcome Mary Salubre. Hi, how are you again? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Not so bad. <laughs> so just looking back at everything that you've done, it mm -hmm. sounds like it's been a very eventful journey yes. with Miss Australasia especially. Thank you've you. built two schools, Yes. you've built the brand and got so mm -hmm. many girls to stand mm -hmm. up for the advocacy of Miss Australasia and help them gain a voice. Yes. How does it feel just looking back at how the journey has? <laughs> uh, looking at um, back in five years ago, I was like, oh my God, sometimes I can't believe it. How did I do it? But um, it's always going to have a team. And uh, with Australasia, we have a very small team, but very loyal and solid team. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm counting on. So I'm hoping that we will flourish still and um, expand bigger and better in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and kind of with that, with your team, how many do you have in your team? Uh, so far, I think I would say I have probably four so far. Wow. Yeah, only four of us. Yeah, so how do you kind of <laughs> keep them intact? Um, that's what do I said, they're very, very loyal yeah. and uh, very um, also strong. Mm -hmm. They um, We uh, dedicate each and every one of us to their own task, like mm -hmm. whatever they're good at. So, uh, yeah, I think, I believe that a small team is better than a bigger team that you can't even, um, you know, you don't know what's happening. So, a uh, very small team, but hands on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and they, it sounds like they have the same traits and kind of characteristics yes. that Australasia stands for. Correct, yes. Yeah. Do Correct. they also have their own advocacies? Uh, no, whatever advocacy Australasia has is their advocacy as well. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So then that works perfectly well because then they, they're motivated to keep working. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. With the same journey yeah. as yes. the brand. Yeah. yeah. Yes, correct. And I'm very happy with this thing because, you know, no matter what you do in life, you're always going to be, there's always going to be something that comes out negative mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. But this team been sticking with me for five years now and they're always going to be there. And whatever they heard from the outside, that's what I said, there's always going to be haters out there, no matter what you do in life, yeah. how good you are in life, um, there's always going to be haters. And um, this team, whatever they heard outside, is still going to be there with me. Yeah. They always stick around. Yeah. yeah. And you said Australia is coming international. It's Sorry. going to Nepal. Nepal. Uh, yeah, going to Nepal. Are you going? Yeah. Are you going to be growing your team then? Yeah, uh, well, I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, the 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 team, the four team, will obviously go, and um, I think Nepal will have their own team as well to be able to assist us with mm -hmm. what's going to happen. So exciting. That's good. Yeah, yeah. that is very exciting. <laughs> yes. How do you feel going international now after mm -hmm. five years? Yeah. yeah, after five years, we actually did our first international in the Philippines mm -hmm. last um, April. Mm -hmm. And uh, next year will be our second year to go internationally. But in the Philippines, it wasn't as good as I expected because um, it was just like a very, very quick um, thinking. Um, as what I've said, I'm not there, so I wasn't really hands-on. I left it in the hands of some other people, so the result is not like um, what I wanted. But um, as what I've said from the beginning, that we can learn from what we experience and use it as our leverage to better ourselves and tighten up whatever areas that you need to be looked after. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you've been in the pageant industry for a long time now. You were a yes. candidate at 16, Yes. <laughs> you were a candidate again at 40, Yes. <laughs> and you're a national director now. And you're also the founder of the Pageant Awards. Yes, yes. the Golden Sash Awards and the International Beauty Pageant Awards. That's yeah. something very important as well. Yeah, and yeah. that is, is that new? That's very new. Actually, I had this 
this uh, vision for the past three years at least. I believe that there's a lot of beauty queens out there that are not being recognized in the industry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of queens that have done a lot of things in the community that are just been neglected. And um, so I thought of myself, I've been watching this Oscar award, right? Best actor, best supporting actor, best teacher, whatever you call it. So I thought to myself, why can't I do this in a beauty queen way? Because there's a lot of beauty queens out there who did a lot of things for the community. It's not just doing something, but you are encouraging others to do the same thing and giving back to the community. So I want to acknowledge these beauty queens, beauty queens and kings. So that's how this golden sash end up. And um, next year, we're going to do the international, which is bigger because we want the whole world to know that there is something for each country to recognize your queens. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I said, the concept was just like the Oscar Award Academy, and this is in the big Queen's Academy Award. So um, I'm hoping that it will be successful. Uh, if you've seen the AGSA last August 31st, it was a successful event because yeah. I, I never thought that first time like it was full. So people just keep coming. It was first time, so I was actually like overwhelmed with the result, which is there, there is a there is a good market for the golden sash. A good potential. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, correct. that's good. Yeah. It's very exciting, and you're already planning your next one. Correct. Yes. yes. Is it going to be held in Australia, Australia again? Yes, it's uh, to be held in Australia. We actually have the uh, we have the Philippines already. Um, we have Malaysia and Sabah. We have Bulgaria. Um, who else do we have? I think we have, I think we're going to have Middle East, we have New Zealand, but each of these countries will, will send 10 of their delegates, meaning to say if they are the, the beauty queen of the year in New Zealand, she will become automatically become the ambassador of New Zealand and to be crowned in Australia. Mm -hmm. So imagine if there's 10 in every country, I don't expect it's going to happen in the first year, but it will eventually, it's yeah. going to be run properly. That's your working yeah. towards. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how are you preparing for that? How are you getting all these connections? That was funny because from the Golden Sash, where we're so scared of what's going to happen, because how the people will react, mm -hmm. because there was already um, there was already a bit of a controversy that this is going to be through publicity, or if you're going to be famous, how do you get this title? So what we did is we got all the people who are involved in the pageantry, national directors, uh, beauty title holders, we got them to to nominate who they think is the right person for these categories and titles. For example, mm -hmm. Miss Beauty Queen of the Year or uh, Miss Humanitarian of the Year. There are different titles. So they nominate someone, whoever got the most vote will become the top four. So we as a team as well, and we have some other people who could give us the insight because we don't know each and every one. Mm -hmm. who's done a good job. So we go through thoroughly with their Facebooks and we also ask some people who is good in the industry if this person is deserving. Yeah. So that's how we come up with the, with the winner because otherwise it's going to be controversial and we might as well throw this in the bin. <laughs> uh, hard work. Yeah. So yeah. At the end of the day, I think it was a good idea, not just through the judges yeah. and not just through the public. So we did uh, both of the judging uh, strategies that's what I said because otherwise controversial will be hammered out there. There's gonna be a lot of like Facebook enemies and yeah. oh, it wasn't run properly. I don't know how they because from the very beginning, even before I started it, I was I already had a uh, controversial with some other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's good. So the process is very detailed and you're very yes. hands on Correct. with the progress of yeah. AXA. Yes. And just with Australasia mm -hmm. and everything that you've done in the pageant industry, mm -hmm. have you has there anything that's evolved that you're really proud of that's happened throughout the years? Yes, absolutely. From the Australasia itself, I, I grow as a, a better person. Mm -hmm. I advocate for something that I wasn't really aware of that I got the capability to be the voice. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I was 18, I also helped my family um, and um, cousins and aunties and uncles, but through the pageantry itself, 
it's a different feeling, so it's a different story. So from Austral Asia, building schools and helping orphanage and and uh, speaking for the animal cruelties and those voiceless to be their voice, it's something that I I managed to be a better person, I think. And from there, it encouraged me to be someone who notice that there are a lot of beauty queens out there that needs to be. Um, acknowledged through merits and maybe their achievements, their hard works through communities, and that's how AXA is um, evolving now. And uh, from there, hopefully, that you know, I will have more projects in the future with substance, obviously. And um, another project that we're looking forward to is um, because I also do a bit of a, uh, a legal clock for for some solicitors, so. Because of my connections and Facebook, you know, social media is good. Um, they asked me to be involved if I can have my own law firm as, you know, um, a person to just get the briefing of the case, uh, to ask questions, what it's all about, and then we'll have our own uh, secretary. And also, at the end of the day, we have our own lawyers on foot who will actually run the proceedings, whatever issues it is. So, which is. There's a lot of things happening from being just an Astral Asia director to be the voice, to have the Australian Golden Sash and to have your own law firm. I think it's <laughs> yeah. you could never go wrong. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of yeah. achievements. Thank you. And it shows mm -hmm. that you just have to mm -hmm. keep going forward. Absolutely. Whatever happens, yeah. take everything as a learning experience mm -hmm. yes. and keep going. Yes. Yeah. There's not enough time of the day, isn't it? The time is the one is just gonna we're gonna chase the time because with whatever we do, it's not enough time. So Yeah. <laughs> so looking at the pageant industry over the few years, do you yeah. think anything about it has changed? Uh, has it from, gone from, from the five years in my own experience? Mm -hmm. I think it, there's a big massive changes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pageantry that just came out for me. It's like mushrooms, it's popping everywhere. And for me, there are a lot of pageantries that doesn't have substance at all. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say, if you want to create a pageant, just create it with a purpose. Meaning to say, and advocate for something what you believe. Yeah. Um, I think those are the things that the people should look at. If, if they are going to have their pageantry, make sure that there is a purpose for it, advocacy. Make sure that you will run with that advocacy throughout the whole year if you are the beauty queen title holder. Make sure that you do the right thing. Make sure that you wear that crown title with, with pride, with integrity, mm -hmm. and you know a right manner to be able to be a role model out there. Because there's just so many around that you don't know what is going on, and they use the words charities, and I don't know what to believe anymore. So uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who are trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, we might be scrutinized one day that um, each pageantry will be looked at. So what's happening and will be questioned. So I think we should try to bring an awareness to stop this and to make sure that if you are doing this, make sure that you do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. you have a lot of responsibility yes. as a director or the owner of a pageant. Correct. You're yeah. taking care of a lot of girls and yes. you're also taking care of an issue that's probably sensitive to a lot of people in the public. Correct, yes. Yeah. Yes. And as a national director of the future, mm -hmm. do you think charity should still be a very big percentage of the final score of the winner? I don't think that should be um, a final score to be able to put that component towards the main criteria. Mm -hmm. I would believe that charity itself should have its own title, mm -hmm. which is that's justified. But to put the component, a big chunk of component, to be able to put that into the main criteria for the main title, I don't think it's right. Um, it's just because that charity is what is really a charity is what I said is based on them how much money you raise. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's fair for others that who has I mean put it this way, even though if you're poor but you've got a good heart and you advocate for something you believe whether you're good in social media that you still could be a role model for others, they're still advocating for something. It could be a mental illness, it could be something to do with uh, domestic violence, it could be an, uh, against animal cruelty. But if you have money and then you just want to get that title, it's basically buying that title, I don't think it's wrong. So um, I think they should mix the two titles, the main titles and the charity queen. 
um, I still think the Charity Queen is a good title because you'll be able to raise funds with your own knowledge but that charity whatever is raised should be put into the advocacy of the organization mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and what are your hopes for Miss Australasia in the future aside from international do you yeah. hope to make it like a really global mm -hmm. thing in here yeah. every country in the world yeah um, Australia Asia only covers Australia and uh, the whole of Asia mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure that Australia Asia will be the, the main umbrella for some other events that we are planning to to uh, raise in the future like for example Australia Asia is the part of AGSA which is that's something really good that I, I believe that it's uh, uh, there's merit in it uh, there's uh, substance about the event it's not just you're doing some events for no reason. Um, basically, is you're acknowledging those beauty queens who did something and giving back something to the community and encouraging others. And um, we are planning as well to um, have our own new event, something uh, Miss Ultimate Universe. Mm. So um, that's something that we've been planning to do it for the past four years, mm. but because the name Ultimate Universe, we just want to make sure that we just don't want to launch it like somewhere in the RSL club. We yeah. want <laughs> we want to launch it somewhere where there's prestige, there's substance, and we make sure that there's main criteria of the girls that who is going to compete. Yeah, uh, it's very high criteria. Um, we want someone who's five six up. Um, Advocacy will be also uh, be part of it for sure. Um, there's not going to be money involved, like um, you have to raise so much money to be able to. Mm -hmm. um, we want to, basically the blueprint of the Miss Universe, if we can be better, because the ultimate, that's why at the moment we're struggling to launch, we're waiting for funding. Yes. And if we do launch it, we want to make sure that uh, we will uh, give justice to it. Yeah. yeah. And what kind of advocacies would that pageant system stand for? I think whatever is the advocacy of the Australia Asia will still be in the same uh, line. That's mm -hmm. what I've said, Australia Asia is the umbrella of the events that we are still planning for the future events. Mm -hmm. So Australia Asia still comes the uh, the top role and that's what I said, that's my baby from the very beginning point. Yeah. It's uh, still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting I said money wasn't going to be involved. Mm -hmm. So the candidates aren't going to be required to raise money for a specific mm -hmm. charity? Well, they can raise money themselves, but they don't need to give it to the organization itself. They can raise money towards the advocacy. So meaning to say they could be um, raising for an orphanage. Mm -hmm. So even if they have their own events, they can directly send that to the advocacy or to their orphanage that whoever they choose with. So it doesn't mean that it, it goes to us. It's it's up to them if they want to give us the money. As what I said, we're always transparent with whatever we, we raise. Mm -hmm. We send it to whoever is the the organization and we always post on Facebook that this is the progress. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and what is the purpose or kind of ambition behind that decision to kind of cut the charity part out of that pageant that you're planning to yeah. create. The, the charity is still there for sure. Um, yeah. uh, I think my plan, um, the biggest plan for this Miss Ultimate Universe is uh, there's a lot of girls that that's, just doesn't do the ad advocacy. I think what I'm, in, I'm planning to do is when, once this girl wins the title as the Miss Ultimate Universe, if for example France wins I think Miss Ultimate Universe will plan to build even um, a kindergarten or orphanage into that country and put that stamp there that this is made from a Miss Ultimate Universe. That's why I said it's, there's a lot of things that we need to be better than the others mm -hmm. uh, to stand out and um, it comes in the line with Australia Asia's advocacy still. So we're still going to keep going with the education and Ultimate Universe, we just want to go internationally. Like, yeah, <laughs> universe. <laughs> yeah, that's very big. Yeah, yeah. You've got some big plans there, and you've yeah. been yeah. putting it and drafting and planning for the past four years. Yeah, I yeah. know. That's what I said. We just don't want to launch it in the RSL club. We want to launch it somewhere like where it's iconic, like Opera House, or what, what we actually plan is Star City. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so 
uh, we want the girls to be happy. Uh, we want to make sure that there's a good price, like just like the Miss Universe, that they will get their their wage because they are the ambassador for you. Oh, okay. We want to make sure that they will get their wage monthly. It's not given to them in one hit, but they'll be paid monthly for being ambassador. So uh, we want to make sure that the girls, whoever wins, will do their job properly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So they're going to be treated very well. Yes. And it, mm. it from everything that you've said and everything that you've been doing, it sounds yeah. like you've been a very good role model, Thank not you. just to these girls, <laughs> but also to directors. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think you're also a voice for the, for the directors who are kind of trying to mm. start? Mm. Uh, yes, I believe that I am the voice for them and to some other people, mm -hmm. but the reaction is we don't know if it's a good voice or a bad voice, mm -hmm. but it's up to them. But what matters is whatever you believe that you think you're right, that's all that matters because I'm sure there's going to be haters everywhere. Whatever you do in life, there's always going to be haters and I don't care about what they think of me. Mm -hmm. that I'm very vocal with what I think, you know, what I believe. And um, to speak up that some of the directors, it's, they don't do this as their passion, it's, they run it as a business and sometimes it's very, um, you know, it, it comes to an exploitation sometimes to these girls that doesn't know what's going on. And especially if you are a beginner, you don't know what's happening, um, you'll be exploited for sure. So I'm hoping that um, you must do your research, don't just jump into anything. If you don't know, um, seek for an advice, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a friend who has experience, uh, a person that has experience, that we want to ask and query, just ask, don't be shy, just ask something if you want to ask for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the pageant industry, it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to see in the future? I'm hoping that uh, people will, will, I'm just keep hammering about the advocacy. Yeah. I think uh, the advocacy is the number one thing. Um, I'm hoping that the girls would would think that uh, this is the main criteria for them. Um, even though you finished your title, just keep continue and keep going and make sure that you give the right um, image to others, you impact it to others, uh, being a role model. Uh, I'm hoping that the people will not just build a pageant or a titles, whatever, for no reason, uh, please think, because Otherwise, it's like um, prostituting the industry. Um, we should respect others who done, who's done something good. Mm -hmm. Not like I want to do something because I think I have a connection. Even there's no substance about what the event is all about. I think um, they should think wisely and the people and the public should be aware that this person is really just running for money. It's not about the they advocate for something. Yeah. So people should know, I think, better because we are the one. If you go for this kind of event, you're encouraging these people that they think they are doing the right thing. So we, we need to see the advocacy, what's behind the, the pageantry, what is the purpose of this. So, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. So, you, change. so you hope to see that pageant systems become more transparent? Correct. Public. Yeah, and more legit rather than uh, money making industry more into advocacy rather than something, whatever they think mm -hmm. they want to do. Yeah. yeah. So how do you think the future candidates will be able to tell the difference between a real pageant compared to someone who's just trying to make money? Well, I think they will experience themselves yeah. and they're just going to be hurt. So I think, uh, as what I've said, they should um, seek for an advice, ask your friends, whoever has an experience from pageantry, and um, if you think that someone's uh, being a role model, just don't, don't be shy. Send a message to that person and ask for advice. What do you think should I do? What do you think of this pageantry? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure now social media days, it's quite big. You'll be able to know who's doing the right thing and who's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a national director, you've done so much. What are some of your personal traits or characteristics that you think really contributed to, su to the successes that you've had over the years? Um, what I've contributed, I think, is... Um, the characteristics yeah. that you have that really... Being very courageous. Yeah. <laughs> and impulsive. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, impulsive and courageous. Uh, nowadays, not very impulsive anymore, mm -hmm. but I'm still very courageous, I think. I always, I don't really care whom I 
I sometimes um, uh, I dealt with. Sometimes it could be very, um, you know, uh, I don't know, like I can be exposed to something that uh, a bit dangerous sometimes, but I don't really care um, because sometimes there are like children involved, for example. Uh, like for example, like uh, it's okay for this uh, religion sometimes, or it's okay for for this type of belief to be able to touch young young kids, for example. Um, I don't think it's right. Uh, I think that's what I'm trying to advocate sometimes that if if we can make a change to respect those children. It would be good to make a difference, mm -hmm. um, not to exploit the children, especially when they're young. Um, sometimes they're shoving their their law or their belief to us, our Westerners or some part of Asia. I don't think it's right. They should keep it to themselves or just stop it completely because it's not right. So you know, um, it's it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're very courageous, very ambitious, mm -hmm. yes. and you're also very dedicated in your visions. Yes. But what I'm interested to know, mm -hmm. what is your biggest dream project? Biggest dream project. I think the my biggest dream project will be the Miss Ultimate Universe. Miss Ultimate yeah, Universe. Yeah, I think yeah. the Miss Ultimate Universe because the title it say it says it all. Uh, why you want to be the ultimate? Yeah, because as what I said, there's a lot of pageantries around. It's just like the boxing. There are junior, there's kids leagues, there's junior leagues, but there's always going to be a heavyweight, which is the ultimate. Mm -hmm. So uh, put things together, you want to be the best out of the whole mob. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and how do you think you would feel once it's out there? I think it's the biggest achievement, mm -hmm. and I know that it's not just going to be. Uh, fulfilled by by me but it's with team um, again Brian is part of the team actually um, he wants to be the, the main the main judge <laughs> for the first time yeah. I know why but he's gonna be the the producer of this um, of this uh, main event yes. in this ultimate universe I think it's gonna be his baby as well so it's uh, a team of people that wants to make sure that you know, there's going to be an ultimate universe and make sure that we will justify the title. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. done so much and we've touched on a lot of things in the pageant industry mm -hmm. from both the candidates and mm -hmm. the director's perspective. Yes. And we, we've heard firsthand what your future aspirations are and we're yes. very honored. And before we go, we're mm -hmm. just going to go back and yes. see some of your sashes and crowns sure. that you've won over the years. Yes, okay, sure. Yeah? That's so we'll bad. get you guys to come along with us and we'll get to see some of your achievements and milestones. Great! So over here we've got some or all of her sashes and awards that she's got laid out for us. And we're going to be talking about maybe some of her journeys that she's had with each one. A um, very memorable experience. So we'll start over here with Mrs. Universe 2016, Mrs. Southeast Asia. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, this is the long gap from 16 to uh, completed. This is the first pageant again yeah. at the age of 40. Oh, so yeah. very exciting. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> wow, what happened to those days, to those years? But uh, very exciting, very exciting moment. The mm -hmm. biggest pageant that I got involved with as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the Mrs. Universe 2016 mm -hmm. grand finals. Yeah. So this is in China? In China, Guangzhou back in 2016. So. I competed with 70 different candidates from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel competing internationally? It was very different. Um, knowing that we didn't have experience really from, from the province straight away to Guangzhou. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to do, but I was just keeping my cool. And uh, that's what I said. They think that was, I was a lawyer, that everybody could just run and seek my advice <laughs> yeah. um, with me. But I said, uh, yeah, I'm trying just to compete, not to be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and then over here, we've got the Women Miss Universe Courage. Was yeah. that? It, this, this three are the part of the, uh, the whole event. Yeah. So I was crowned as the Mrs. Universe Courage, which is I'm very, very glad. Mm. As you can see, I'm always courageous with what I see in Facebook. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm very outspoken. So that's mm -hmm. the real me. That's my favorite title. <laughs> 
And yeah. then next you've got the Philippines Classic Universe 2017. Yes. Can you tell us a little about this one? Um, yeah. After I competed in China, um, I was asked to represent the Philippines for Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. um, Classic Universe is the one above Mrs. Universe. So um, I went to Bulgaria back in 2017 and I was crowned as the Mrs. Classic Galaxy. At the yeah. at the international Correct. stage. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow! Yes. And these are kind of so these three together. Yes. And then you these two together, together. The following year. Yes. Great. And yeah. then the next one you had Mrs. Australia International. Yeah. What year was that? Was that in? Um, this was in Singapore. So um, when I landed in Singapore, this is the sash that I wore. And if you can see, there was a bit of a missing part there because. Luckily, uh, my dress was spread and uh, something happened with the zipper. Oh. So I, <laughs> I cut my sash to be able to make it like a lace. Otherwise, I won't be able to, to wear my gown and the galenite. So there was a bit of a missing piece there. So as well as I said, we've got to be uh, ready when you compete overseas. You don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the next day, we were given our, our sash, the finalist sash. Mm -hmm. And these are... This is my subtitle. So I was the Mrs. International Polygenic Beauty. Also, I like this one. This is the Mrs. International uh, Inspiring Leadership Award. Again, they could see that um, I'm a leader, not a follower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's good. And this is my my ultimate um, title for the internationals, the International Global Beauty. Global Beauty. Yeah. So I guess it shows throughout your Candidacy journey, the yes. pageant industry, you've always kind of stood out as a courageous one. Yes. Someone who was very ambitious and had a strong <laughs> focus. Yes. Yeah. And we'll just talk about what we've got behind here. Do you want to yes. talk about this one here? Oh, this is, um, this money is 2,000 ringgit. I don't know, that's probably like $500. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to, uh, this is, uh, this one is from Mr. Malaysia. He is crowned as Mr. Australasia Asia um, Universal in the Philippines, our first international band. So he's donated that, and uh, I believe that we'll probably come up together with that. Um, oh, that so 30,000 together. gets together. So this 30,000 ringgit, I would say that's probably $10,000, which is, it's not in cash, but for this, the Philippine students mean to say that we're looking for someone in the Philippines who can't afford, like the family are um, quite unfortunate. So this this lucky student will go to Malaysia for three years and study, and this money will be absorbed towards the uh, the school fees. And Mr. Malaysia is kind enough to uh, feed the, uh, the students and make sure that he has an accommodation for the whole three years. Oh, wow. that's what it's all about. So we're looking for that child at the moment. Oh, well, that's so cool, and that's still, yeah. you're still ongoing with your Correct. applications and Yeah, stuff. we still haven't decided which one. We will decide, I would say, early next year. Mm -hmm. And then this will also go towards the person who gets a scholarship? Yeah, it's yes. like a scholarship, yes. That's cool. So how did, how did you come about that again? Was that Mr. Astral Asia Universal? So we had our first international pageant as the Astral Asia in, Manila, uh, in Cebu, mm -hmm. so the winner which is Mr. Malaysia, he donated this money because he is the ambassador of the college itself. Oh, okay. So he, he works in the government. That's good, yeah. that's very kind of him. Yes, and then correct. over here, we've got three. Yeah. Do you want to talk about these ones? Uh, this is just um, the schools that we, we build in the Philippines. We get the recognitions from the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, I have my one there everywhere is in the house. Yeah. This is with my, my Chantel Forget is my eldest daughter and Michael is my youngest son. These two also had an input into the project because Chantel, she does painting and we raise funds like if we have an auction that goes towards the project of building. So oh. the same with uh, Michael. Uh, on his baby shower, <laughs> but he didn't get any present. But instead, we asked for donations towards the building of the school. So they've done their advocacy before they were born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very yeah. good. Thank and you. then over here, you've got yeah the best children's pageant of the year. Yeah, that's the Australian Golden Sash Award. So we've been nominated as one of the children's pageant of the year. Mm. So uh, yeah, so we're in the top four. 
<laughs> nominated by nominated. the public. Yes. That's so good. Thank you. So you've had a very eventful journey in the pageant industry and you're still ongoing. Yes. And it's really good to see that you're still being a voice mm. for your advocacy for yeah. your domestic violence. Yeah. Children's education is going very well. You're, Thank you. yes. you're going to be kind yeah. of sponsoring yes. someone yeah. to get their education. International in yes. the too. Yes. And you've got all these experiences you've had and you're able to put yourself you're a director who's able to relate to the candidate themselves. Yes. And kind of use your experience to make sure that they're Treated mm -hmm. fairly and very responsibly. Yes, yeah. that's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So with all these experiences that you've had, do you sometimes show them to the candidates in Miss Australasia and Mrs. Universe? <laughs> no, actually that's funny because I don't anymore. I don't even wear these sashes anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because um, no crowns, no sash. They're asking me, well, what happened to your titles? Uh, it's all in my mind. Um, <laughs> I think I believe that I'm just going to guide them in the right path and, um, you know, uh, make sure that they are doing it in the right manner. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need a crown or a sash to be a little bit. <laughs> I think you're a woman of substance <laughs> oh, and people kind of recognize yeah. you for that. Thank you. So, thank you so much for having us mm -hmm. here and being a guest yeah. on Behind the Lens. Mm -hmm. And from Mary Salubre, we learned so much from being a candidate and director and even as a parent or a friend supporting these girls or guys who are competing at these pageant systems, it can get very competitive mm -hmm. and it can have a major effect, both positive and negative, on somebody. And it really depends on the support system and it depends on their mindset. So it's very important for them to be, to be prepared before they get into the competition because whatever happens then and afterwards is always going to be up to them. And this is another episode of Behind the Lens. We'll see you guys next time. She was born and raised in the Philippines. She lived a very eventful life, coming from a hard, hard and challenging lifestyle in a provincial area in the Philippines. She found her way to Australia, a developed country, where she was able to find herself opportunities that helped her become the successful woman that she is today. She was a candidate in various pageant systems, locally, nationally, and internationally. She was able to use those experiences to become a good role model to directors, to national directors and owners of pageants. Because as a national director of a pageant and an owner, you have the responsibility to make sure that you take care of your candidates with genuine and passion. Because you have a purpose, you are a voice for a specific issue, and you need to make sure that everything you do is transparent, that everyone is involved, so that it can continue to grow and become the success that you want it to be. Thank you so much for watching Behind the Lens. We'll see you guys next time. Glitzing glam is the fame, but it's the work backstage that makes the game. I'm Christelle and Levee Bandal, your host from Behind the Lens, and this is Miss Runway Supermodel Australia.